Little Richard credits his own discovery to sister Rosetta Tharp when, in a 1945 show in Macon, Georgia, she invited him on stage. He called it the best thing that ever happened to me. For two decades before rock and roll had ever entered the public consciousness, Tharp was essentially performing its sound on record and in tours across the US and Europe. Her gospel-influenced rhythm and blues sound in the 1940s became the sound of rock and roll in the 50s, crowning her the godmother of rock and roll. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt here. I hope you're doing marvellously well. Welcome back to another episode of the series. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have another new video. And if you're into production, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Sister Rosetta Tharp was born Rosetta Newbin in Cotton Plant, Arkansas on March the 20th, 1915. Both of her parents were musicians, although very little is known about her father, except that he was a singer. Tharp's mother was active in music with the Church of God in Christ a charismatic Christian denomination in which music was an integral element. And it was in this gospel music setting where Tharp first began performing, at age four. From a very young age, she started touring with her mother, singing in evangelical performance groups. At the age of 19, she moved to New York, where she was hired by band leader Lucky Melinda as a vocalist. Look down, look down, that don't some In 1938, she was signed to Decca Records, where she recorded secular tracks like This Train and Rock Me, as well as continuing her religious singing with tracks like Precious Lord and Down by the Riverside. Rock Me is a notable track in the history of rock and roll, recorded in 1938, when the earliest rock and rollers were still just little kids. Elvis Presley was just three. With Melinda's orchestra, you can hear that swinging, late 30s sound, but Tharp's guitar playing and vocals bring an awe-inspiring edge to the sound. The little growls as she sings Rock Me in the Cradle of Our Love showcases Tharp as an original against the smooth crooning of the time. You hide me in the bosom, tell the storm of light. And in 1942, a review of the track in Billboard magazine foreshadowed the result of her magnificent influence, saying it's sister Rosetta Tharp for the rock and roll spiritual singing. With this performance, Tharp was called a rock and roll singer, long before Alan Freed ever stepped up to a DJ microphone, spinning rhythm and blues records for a whole generation of teenage youths and calling them rock and roll. It's impossible to overstate Tharp's importance in the history of rock and roll. Although her story was left out in the earliest history in books for many, many years. Certainly now we are hearing more and more about what a massive influence she had. Another one of those early gospel-based tracks, Down by the Riverside, was a staple of the nascent rock and roll scene coming out of Memphis in the mid-50s. It was a popular track for many of the Big Sun Records artists, like Elvis, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Carl Parkins, who used it to warm up in the studio. For these early rock and rollers in the mid-50s, sister Rosetta Tharp was the common link whose sound and performance style inspired their own performances. I feel so bad in the morning. In the morning. I feel so bad in the middle of the day. Yes. I feel so bad in the evening. In the evening. That's why I'm going to the river. Wash my sins away. Listening and understanding the music of Sister Rosetta Tharp helps us to understand the incredible influence gospel music had on the development of rock and roll. She was a gospel singer, undoubtedly, 
but she transcended the traditional gospel setting of a Sunday morning deliverance, performing this style music for wider audiences as entertainment in clubs and other more secular performance settings. She broke down barriers too. In the 30s, jazz was the music of the age at venues like the Cotton Club in Harlem, with regular performances by Cab Calloway and the Nicholas Brothers dancing duo. In 1938, Tharp joined their performance cast, performing gospel and rhythm and blues songs for predominantly white audiences who would have not been previously exposed to these musical styles. Also in 1938, and again in 1939, she performed in the famous Spirituals to Swing concerts that were presented by John Hammond in Carnegie Hall. These were the concerts that featured African-American performers playing black created music in Carnegie Hall and performing to an integrated audience. In many ways, we can view Tharp as the face and the voice of African-American musical styles like gospel and rhythm and blues, bringing them to a much wider audience. Tharp's popularity as a performer and recording artist made her the only gospel-affiliated artist to be enlisted to record V-discs for the military during World War II. In 1944, one of these V-disc tracks, Strange Things Are Happening Every Day, became the first gospel track to cross over to the race records charts, as they were still called in 1944. Soon after, this practice would be dropped in favor of the term rhythm and blues charts. The song hit number two on the Billboard race charts in April of 1945. Jesus is the holy light, turning darkness into light. There are strange things. This particular track is not only notable because it carries the early sounds of rock and roll, but it was also so well loved that it continued to be played for many years after its release. For instance, famed Memphis DJ Dewey Phillips was still playing it on his rock and roll radio show in the mid 50s, keeping her music alive for a new generation of young musicians like Jerry Lee Lewis. Lewis ended up singing the song for his audition for Sam Phillips and Sun Records in the 50s. In the late 40s, she recorded a series of duets with Marie Knight. They toured together and recorded tracks like Didn't It Rain in 1947 and Up Above My Head in 1948. In 1957, Tharp married her manager, Russell Morrison, in a public ceremony in front of 25,000 paying guests at the Griffith Baseball Stadium in Washington, D.C. A concert was included in the ceremony, which was recorded and later turned into an album. I, Rosetta, I, Rosetta. take thee, Russell, take thee, Russell. For, my for my wedded husband. In the late 1950s, Tharp toured abroad, bringing blues and gospel music to Europe, including Britain. These tours would inspire many of the young British invasion artists who would come to the US in the 60s. It was in 1957 where she famously quoted in London's Daily Mirror saying, all this new stuff they call rock and roll, why, I've been playing that for years now. And she was right. Sister Rosetta Tharp was the voice of rock and roll, before rock and roll was even in the larger public consciousness, and certainly before we started calling it that. She also stood out from the crowd for accompanying herself on guitar, and doing it really well. Her voice was undoubtedly a huge element of how she reached her audiences, but her guitar playing remains an integral part of her legacy, and how she really earned her reputation of one of the four mothers of rock and roll. <laughs> Despite her successful career, she died in Philadelphia in 1973, with little fanfare or notice. She was buried in a local cemetery, without even a headstone. And for many years, she faded from rock and roll memory. <laughs> 
but new efforts to understand the roots of this music have renewed interest in this remarkable artist. And her mark is undeniable. Tharp was a huge influence on the nascent rock and roll landscape, and she is finally starting to get some of the recognition she so richly deserves. In 2007, she was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame, and in 2018, she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's hard to overstate how important Sister Rosetta Tharp was. The fact that now, all these years later, it is so blatantly obvious how important she is, how instrumental she was in shaping music. The fact that these great rock and roll singers knew her songs by heart, used them in auditions, sung them for warm-ups. It's, it's bewildering, isn't it? That massive worldwide success that came later for other artists can overshadow where the music comes from. I do a lot of these videos about artists that people don't know that much about, meaning not popular, successful artists that sold millions of records, but artists like Sister Rosetta Tharp that had such a profound effect on all that heard her. Every musician that heard her borrowed something from her. Some may say took from her, but ultimately, she's the godmother of rock and roll. It's so obvious when you scratch the surface and see how incredible her influence truly was. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please give us any comments and questions below. We'd love to know anybody else you'd like us to feature. We have a whole bunch of people coming up and maybe we've already done some of them. We recently did Charlie Christian and quite a few people asked about Django. Well, actually we do have a Django Reinhardt video and we have more great ones in the works. So please check out the other videos in this series. Please subscribe. Thank you ever so much for watching. So long, farewell, au revoir, au revoir, adios, adio, goodbye. Tschüss.